Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Rajan Moino, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Is that clear enough? Yeah, well, quite clear. All right. So we start uh, today's global competency modeling, and uh, we invite one professor uh, who is a super famous, nice professor we can invite. Uh, Professor Miyamoto from Tokyo Metropolitan University. And he has been, uh, he had been working as an economist in the International Monetary Fund, international organizations. And his specialization is uh, macroeconomics, labor economics, and Japanese economics. And uh, probably, Professor Miyamoto, please introduce about yourself to the student today. Thank you for coming and willingness to do lecture today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Kochani, for the very good. Uh, introductions. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to have uh, this opportunity. I'm uh, very excited to have a talk uh, in front of students of the Coach Institution of Technologies. Uh, the first, uh, so today, I'm going to talk about the challenges and the future of Japanese economy. And before I start my talk, uh, let me introduce myself very briefly. Uh, my name is Hiro Miyamoto. Uh, as Professor Kotani mentioned, uh, I'm a country professor at the Tokyo Metropolitan University. Uh, I joined this university from 2020 April. Uh, before 2020 April, I was in the Washington DC United States and I was economist at the uh, International Monetary Fund, the IMF. Uh, while I was in the IMF, I conducted research on the world economy and provided the policy advice to the, the membership country of the IMF. And uh, uh, before I joined the IMF, I was in the academia and I was a professor at the Tokyo University, uh, University of Tokyo, and also International University of Japan, where I met Professor Kotani. I, my specialization is macroeconomics and the labor economics and also Japanese economies. Uh, my views on the Japanese economy appear in several media, uh, both uh, in the domestic and international, uh, including Nikkei newspaper, World Economic Forum, Bloomberg's Wall Street Journal, and so on and so forth. Anyway, uh, that's me. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for having me. Now let's get to start. So today uh, I have one hour. Uh, so first 45 to 15 minutes, I will uh, talk about the labor market Miyamo-san, 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 Kikoeru? Miyamo-san? Mosh-mosh, Miyamo-san? Mosh-mosh. Mosh-mosh.
もしもし宮本さん。もしもし。あ、ハロー。宮本さん、ちょっとごめん、なんか今一旦上、インターネットがちょっと途切れて、もう一回ちょっとや,やり直してくれる途中からイン、あの、イントロダクションが終わったあたりから。OK、OK。ごめん、sorry、sorry。Just a moment, I'm now、yeah. uh, sharing my screen.Yes, sorry.No problem. ごめんなんか今、時々学内のなんかインターネット途切れることがあって、ちょっと今それが起こった。I see. I see.、はい、sorry. No problem. OK. じゃあ、ごめんなさい。もう一回。あの、そ、uh, の、セルフイントロダクションが終わったあたりから。はい。OK。Okay. Yes. So, first, let's start with very simple quiz. So, now I can give you、uh, the situation. Of a countries. And please find, please consider which country is it. So these、uh, four sentences d e s c r i b e s the situation、uh, of a specific country. First,、uh, in that country, s life expectancy is early 40s, both, both、uh, male and female. And second,、uh, if we look at the access. To the electricity in the countries.、Uh, electricity penetration rate to the home is about 4%. So only 4% of the household could access the electricity in the countries. Third,、uh, as for education,、uh, college, I'm sorry, high school enrollment rate、uh, is 10% or less.、Uh, finally, uh, if we look at the、uh, infant mortality rate, Is approximately 180,158. So, infant mortality rate is the number of deaths less than one year old per 1,000 births.、Uh, this is the infant mortality rate. That is 158 in the countries. So, these four situations describe,、uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, these four sentences describe s the situation of some countries. So, my question is which country is it? Please consider. Uh, this question. And、uh, since we have so many countries in the world,、uh, first, I can give you some hint. Okay.、Uh, for your reference,、uh, let's look at the current situation in Japan. Okay. This is just for your reference.、Uh, as for、uh, life expectancy, The, in 2020, life expectancy in Japan is 81.64 for males, for females,、uh, about 87. And、uh, as for the electricity penetration rate, that is almost 100%, as we、uh, easily imagine. And the high school enrollment rate is also very high in the system in 2019.、Uh, it's about Uh, 98.8. Finally, if we look at the infant mortality rate, that is 1.9. So, if we compare the situation in Japan with the situation of this country, it's a completely different. Okay?、Uh, we could say the country in the question is very poor, much poor compared to Japan. So, the question is which is the country? Do you have any ideas?、Uh, if you have any idea, please let me know.、Uh, you can use chat or,、uh, or you, even you can say the answer、uh, after you turning on the mic, microphone on. Do you have any idea? Do you understand my questions? So I describe the situation of the country by using these four breadth points. Now, the question is, which is the country? Do you have any idea? This country is very poor. Miyamoto-san,、はい、I will assign one student to answer the question. <laughs> sure. Emoto-san, could you please give an answer to the quiz one? Hi. Hey. <laughs> We have so many countries,、yeah. so it is very hard to find or, or you know. 
So, Emoto san,、uh, and it is I, very fine to find the correct answer.、Hi. So, life expectancy, what does it mean by this? So, this is, まあ平均寿命ね life expectancy. で、エレクトリシティペネトレーションレートっていうのは、電気がどのくらい、まあ、あの、各家庭に届いてるか。で、ハイスクール、ハイスクールエンロールメントレートっていうのは、高校に入学する割合。10% でむちゃむちゃ低いでしょ、ね、イ,ンファンインファントモータリティレイトっていうのは1000人生まれて1年以内に死ぬナンバーが158。この状況の中で、Which country might be corresponding to that kind of data? エモトさん、まあ、まあ、要は結構悲劇的な国ってことはわかる<笑>あ、わかります。うん、その国どこか適当にちょっと言ってごらん。あじゃあアフリカで、あアフリカって書きますアフ,リカの国アフリカは大陸だからね。あじゃあ南アフリカで。うん。<笑> so、you have a very... 南,アフ南アフリカってちなみにアフリカ大陸の中で一番金持ちだから。<笑>あそうですよね。一番下の国ですよね。あ<笑>あのまあいいや、宮本先生、Please give an answer to it. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emoto san. So, you guessed that this country is located in the somewhere in the African continental. I guess this is a very good guess. So, now I can give you one more hint. Okay. Have you ever heard about、uh, International Poverty Line? Have you ever heard about this one? International Poverty Line?、Uh, international Poverty Line is defined by World Bank. And、uh, this is a line. Uh, if people are living for less than 1.9 US dollars a day, then we can say these people i s under the international poverty line. And the, as for the World Bank, the world poverty increased in 2020 for the first time in the last 20 years. So actually, surprisingly, the poverty declined over the years. Uh, because of, but, uh, but because of COVID 19 pandemic in 2020, the world poverty increased. That was the first time in the last 20 years. Okay. And now you can see the world map here. I took this chart, uh, this uh, picture uh, from the World Bank website. Now you can see、uh, some country has blue color. Uh, dark blue color to light color. And if that country is very poor,、uh, the country is highlighted by dark blue colors. So you may see there are very poor countries in South America, and some of African c o u n t r i e is poor. And also, we can see in South Asian c o u n t r i e is relatively poor. So、uh, As you can imagine, the situation of the country in the question is very poor. So, this must be a very poverty country. Okay? So, and now the poverty country is located in the South America, African continental, and also East,、uh, Southeast Asia. So, the question is which is that country in question? s So, Emoto san mentioned that、uh, this country should be, might be somewhere in the Africa. Okay. So, do you have any idea now? Now you can see、uh, the location of poverty country at this moment. But given this hint, do you have any new idea or thought? Oh, thank you very much,、uh, Ilan, Mozambique. Okay. It's a very good guess. Thank you very much.、Uh, if you have any other answers,、uh, please let me know. Yeah. So it seems time is limited, so I will, I will move on. Okay.、Uh, the answer is Japan. The answer is Japan, but the, this is Japan in 100 years ago, the almost the end of the Meiji era. The situation in Japan is like this. Okay? Life expectancy is very short. The most of、uh, households could not access to the electricity.、Uh, education, as for education,、uh, education system is very poor, only 10% or less 
uh, people uh, could go to the high school and the uh, infant mortality rate was very high. This was Japan, but that was 100 years ago, okay? The question is, why Japan changed the situation so dramatically within just 100 years? This is a key question. The answer is very simple. This comes from economic growth. Of course, economic growth is not the only uh, the reason. However, uh, the economic growth is a main reason for this dramatically change in Japan societies. So now you can see this chart. This chart shows the, the evolution of GDP by capitals. Uh, this blue line is Japan. Okay, this is Japan. And this is the world. So almost 100 years ago, Japan's GDP, cap, GDP per capita is uh, just 1,000 US dollars. But within 100 years, it becomes almost uh, 20 times as much as those uh, in 100 years ago. Okay, uh, Because of this rapid economic growth, Japan's society developed very well and we have good uh, education system, uh, we have better uh, health technology, and so on and so forth. As a result, uh, we have a better life. Okay? So economic growth is very important. Okay? However, unfortunately, now Japan's economic growth or Japan's national power is declining. This chart shows Japan's ranking in the world economy, okay? This is the Japan's ranking in the world economy. Uh, vertical axis is the ranking. So this is number one. This is number one. And number five, number 10, so on and so forth. And the horizontal line is the years, okay? And if we look at the GDP per capita in terms of US dollars, in early 1990s and early 2000s, this period, Japan's ranking in the world is within top five or top 10. Okay, so Japan's position is very high. Japan's national power was very strong. However, after 2000, ranking fell sharply. And at this moment, Japanese Japan's ranking in the world economy is 26, okay? So some people say that Japan is a very rich country and the world top country, one of the top advanced economy in the world. This is not true. Japan's ranking is 26. So Japanese is not rich uh, compared to other countries. This is the situation, okay? So we have to look at the data very carefully. Then we can see uh, the current our positions. Okay, now let's look at another uh, data. Uh, we just look at the GDP, but now let's look at the level of education. Have you ever heard about the Times Higher Education? Uh, T H E. Times is a very famous UK magazine, and this Times ranks the university in the world. And every year, this uh, Times uh, published the report, Times Higher Education. And according to our latest Times Higher Education, there are only two universities uh, in Japan uh, ranks in top 200 world universities. They are University of Tokyo and Kyoto University. Okay? And if we look at the ranking of University of Tokyo, okay, that is 35th. Uh, as for Kyoto University, ranking is 61. So what I want to say here is that the, most of people think uh, Japan uh, University of Tokyo or Kyoto University is the best university in Japan. Perhaps this is true. However, but the, however, if we look at the world market, the ranking of Japanese university is relatively uh, low. Okay. University of Tokyo, Kyoto University is a good university in Japan. However, if we look at the world market, it's not. Okay. So this is the fact, this is true. 
Okay. And if you look at the number of universities in top 200, the United States has 57 schools. Then uh, next one is the UK. UK has 28 uh, universities in top 200. And Germany has 22. Japan has only two. Okay. So Japanese education system is a very, very poor among the advanced economy. This is a fact. Okay. This is a fact. And uh, even in Asia, okay, although the population size is completely different, however, China is still an uh, emerging economy. Okay? Even in China, there are 10 schools, 10 universities uh, ranked in top 200 universities in the world. And in the Hong Kong, we have five schools, five universities in top 200. So compared to that situation, Japan's education system is very, very, very poor. So this is another sign that the Japan's national power is declining. Okay? The question is why Japan's national power declining in the last 20 or 30 years? The reason is, there are many reasons, but the, I think the main reason is Japan's society or Japanese economy has not adapted changes in megatrend, which is surrounding uh, Japanese economy. So what is a megatrend? What is the change in the megatrend? Uh, there are four changes in megatrend. First one is change in demographic structures. So as you know that now we have many elderly people in this country and the population decline. So demographic structure change dramatically in the last 20 or 30 years in this country. Second, now we are doing greening. So uh, as you know that the climate change uh, is uh, perhaps climate change is the uh, most important issue now human being face. And in order to achieve net zero uh, CO2 emissions, uh, now we are doing the greening. And this greening change, the structure of economy, structure of society, uh, everything in next 20 or 30 years. Okay? This is another mega trend. The third mega trend is technological progress. Okay? And now it is said that the fourth industrial revolution is ongoing. So a technological progress also affects our life. The last one is the globalization. So now we have change in these trends and which affect our life, our economy, our society. And unfortunately, Japan's system, Japan's economy, Japan's political economy, everything has not, have not adapted to these change. Uh, that's why uh, Japan's national power is now declining. So now let's look at the details, okay? And, but before we look at the detail, I have one more quiz. Uh, you don't need to answer this, but please consider. So what do they mean? So now you can see one in three. What does it mean by that? One in three. Then population of China, uh, Canada. What, what is population of Canada? What does it mean? Finally, palm, and from five minutes to three seconds. So please consider what these mean, okay? Uh, I can give you the answer uh, later, okay? This is another quiz. Okay, so first, uh, let's look at the current situation. Uh, now, in Japan, uh, there are lots of old peoples. So this chart shows number of uh, population. Uh, and uh, if you look at this chart, the Japanese population increased uh, until early 2000, early 2000. However, now Japan's population start to decline and it is expected uh, Japanese population decline very sharply in next few decades. And if we look at the share of elderly people, uh, this red line is share of uh, old people, old to total population. Now, uh, this, the share of old people to total uh, population is about 30%, uh, look at this, 29%. Uh, 
So almost one third of population is elderly people, older people. And this rate is expected to increase in the next few decades. Okay, now let's look at the more details. So this chart shows the forecast of our populations. As I mentioned, now Japan's population start to decline and there are several forecasts. But uh, according to uh, the government, uh, now the, we have 126 million uh, in, in this country, but in 2050s, Japanese population will be 102 million. That means the population decre will decrease by 24.5 million. By 2065, Japanese population will be 89 million. That means uh, decrease of population is about 38.4 million. Okay, so it's a huge number. Uh, for your reference, if we look at the population of Canada, population of Canada is 37 million. That is almost equivalent to the number of decline in Japanese population in next 40 years or 45 years. Okay, so within next 45 years from these countries, the a lot of people disappear. The size of this decline is equivalent to or more than the population of Canada. This is the situation of these countries. Okay, this is the situation of these countries. And also, not only uh, the, we are facing declining populations, uh, now we are facing a longevity societies. So this chart shows life expectancy in Japan, uh, male and the females. In 2019, uh, 2019 uh, males' life expectancy is about 82 years old, a female is 87 years old. And you can see life expectancy increased over the time, okay? So now it is say that one year life is aliving, 100 year life is aliving, okay? According to the government, the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, the percentage of Japanese who was born in 2019, okay? Among them, uh, people live to up to 75 years is almost 90% for females. For male, 76%. Uh, okay. And uh, the percentage people who live to uh, 90 years old is 51% for females. So, uh, what does it mean by that? So, if you have daughters, okay? Uh, if you get the new baby this year, she will be uh, more than 90 years old with probability 50%. That means, you know, uh, in the next few decades, this country will be full of elderly people, especially female, okay? This is the situation of the countries, okay? Then what's gonna happen, okay? What's gonna happen? Then it's, destroy our life course. Okay, this is the key. So let's think about the typical Japanese life course, okay? Typical Japanese life course consists of three stage, okay? Education, work, retirement, okay? This is typical Japanese life course. So most people go to the uh, high school, or college and they graduate school at age 18 or 22, okay? So until 22 or until 18, the most people go to the school. So this is the stage of education. So we have education stage first. Here, this is education stage. But after the graduation, we start to work and we will work until retirement ages. So now the most of the companies set the retirement age is 65. So this is stage of work. Then after that, we have remaining life, okay, retirement and remaining life. 
So typical Japanese life course consists of three stages, education, work, retirement. Okay. But uh, under this uh, life course is supported by Japanese employment system. Okay, Japanese employment system has supported this life course. Okay. However, this model does not work in the world people lives until 90 years old or even 100 years. Why? The simple, life after retirement is too long. So two or three years ago, the finance agents in Japanese, Kin uh, published one report. Uh, this report was very shocking. Uh, this report said that if a couple, the older couple lives until age 95, they need uh, 20 million yen, nisen maen, 20 million yen uh, for their retirement life in addition to pension, okay? In addition pensions. So that means if you live in this long, if you live very long life, you have to prepare the, this retirement period and you need a lot of money. And it's very hard to uh, save such a, a huge amount of money. So the point is, as long as we, we keep this employment system and this Japanese typical life course, uh, we cannot survive after retirement, okay? So this is the issue, okay? And not only that, uh, so what's gonna happen uh, in the longevity societies? I guess we have to work longer than ever, okay? Uh, since retirement period is too long, that's why this system or this model doesn't work. So in order, in order to survive in the longevity society, we have to longer. But if we work longer, uh, we will face more opportunity. Uh, we will face the more changes, okay? We will face the more changes. For example, have you ever heard about the GAFA? A GAFA is Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apples. Now the Facebook changed the company name from Facebook to Meta. So maybe I have to say Gamma, okay? Google, Apple, Meta, uh, Amazon, Meta, Apple. Okay, these four companies are leading industry at this moment, okay? Uh, these are world, top world companies. But uh, these companies just appears after 1919s, okay? So within just this 30 years, these company appears. So it is more likely that uh, in the next few decades, we will have different reading industry, different uh, industry structures, many things, okay? So if we live longer, we will face more changes, okay? And in 2013, uh, we will have so-called era of 6Gs, okay? Uh, do you know the 5G or 4G? This is a... Uh, uh, speed of internet. The country, uh, Japan society, uh, shift from the world of 4G to 5G. Okay? The speed of internet uh, dramatically uh, improves. But uh, in 2030, uh, we have 6Gs. So that is much, much powerful compared to 5Gs. Uh, for example, if we want to download two hours of movies, uh, in the 5G, it takes three minutes or five minutes. But in the uh, 6G, it only takes one second or two seconds, okay? And moreover, now we have more new technologies. For example, in the US, our palm becomes credit card. Okay? You don't need to bring the uh, wallet. Even you don't need to bring the, the smartphone, okay? If you just go to the uh, grocery shop and uh, after you buy many things, uh, when you, you know, leave the uh, stores, if you just show your palm, uh, this become your credit card. This will, you know, uh, take place in the United States in the next few years. Okay, so that means so we have more new technologies. Okay, and we will face many changes uh, in the longevity societies. Okay, but the question, but the issue is, current economy and the social system do not uh, adapt them these changes. That's why we have many problems. 
And uh, let's go back to Japan, okay? So Japan's typical life course is supported by Japanese employment practice, okay? Japanese employment practice. Uh, in Japanese, Nihon Teki Koyo Kanko. Okay, this is Japanese employment practice. And what is characteristics of Japanese employment practice? Uh, there are two. First one is lifetime employment. A lifetime employment means once you get the job, you can work the company until your retirement ages. So basically your job is secured. Okay, now this is lifetime employment. The second one is the seniority wages. Seniority wages means your wage or your salary depends on your age. So if you get old, you can get more. This is a typical uh, wage system in the Japanese companies. So these lifetime employment seniority wages is a characteristics or future of Japanese employment practice. And this Japanese employment practice or system targets a specific workers, okay? Target the worker is uh, full-time workers and the gender must be male. And this male full-time worker should have housewives. Okay. This is a target for Japanese employment system. In other words, Japanese employment practice is for male full-time employee with housewife. That means uh, current Japanese employment system or practice do not take into account uh, working females, elderly peoples, non regular workers, okay? I will come back to this point later. And uh, this Japanese employment system was formed and uh, established uh, during the post-war period, okay? Uh, after World War II, uh, Japan has a uh, lot of economic rapid to economic growth period. During that time, uh, Japan established this employment system and we maintain this system until now. And however, this Japanese employment practice has two prerequisites. First one is sustainable and high economic growth. The second one is a lot of youth population. So without uh, these two factors, it is impossible to keep Japanese employment system, okay? Japanese employment system was established under the condition we have high and sustainable economic growth and abundant young population. But how about now? So in 1960 or 1970s, where uh, Japanese employment practice was established, uh, growth rate was very high and, and uh, it's sustainable. However, now growth rate is almost 1% or even less than 1%. So rapid and sustainable economic growth uh, disappear from this country. That means uh, the pre-request for Japanese employment practice is already gone. Not only that, as I mentioned, uh, share of elderly people increased over the time. And Japan is the most aged country at this moment. That means share of youth is uh, actually is declining, gets smaller. So another uh, pre-request for Japanese employment practice also, uh, collapsed, okay? So since uh, pre-requests for Japanese employment pra practice uh, are not uh, uh, are completely gone, however, Japan tried to keep this employment practice. That's why we face many issues, okay? For example, as I mentioned, Japanese employment practice target for full-time male worker with housewife. So we do not care about working females, elderly peoples, uh, non-regular workers, okay? They are not expected. They are not considered uh, in this practice. Therefore, if female want to work, it is very difficult to balance the work and the families, okay? Uh, we have such a problem. And also uh, elderly people, uh, they are very hard. It is very hard for them to work, okay? 
after retirement ages. And finally, we have a huge disparity between regular work and non-regular workers. Okay. Why do I have such a problem? The reason is simple. Uh, Japanese employment system uh, do not consider, does not consider these uh, types of workers. And moreover, Japanese employment system doesn't work anymore. Uh, since Japanese employment system does not work anymore, it also affects regular employees. Regular, even regular employees face this problem. That is long working hours issues. Okay? So this is the situation of these countries. Okay? This is the situation of these countries. Okay? And unfortunately, in Japan, there is only one chance. There are the only one chance. What does it mean by that? So some people, of course, still get some benefit from Japanese employment practice. If you can get a job in the very big Japanese companies, uh, still, these large company uh, used Japanese employment practice, and you can enjoy lifetime employment and the seniority wages. But uh, those who miss the job opportunity, they are very hard to start over. Okay? This is the situation of these countries. And uh, we have a so called cohort effect. Okay? We have a so called cohort effect. What is a call for the effect? Uh, if generation do not get good employment opportunity in their uh, youth, they are uh, placed uh, long-term disadvantages uh, in working condition, and not only that, family formations. Okay? This is so-called the cohort effect. So if somebody cannot get good job when they graduate school, uh, they, they will put on the place, disadvantages place, uh, both in the uh, working condition and the family formation. This is the cohort effect. And we observe this effect in these countries. Okay. Uh, so what, what is the root problem? Okay. What is the root problem? The root problem is the Japanese labor market is too rigid. Okay. Japanese labor market is not flexible because of this Japanese employment system. That's why there is only one chance. And once we uh, miss the opportunity, once we miss the chance, we, it is very hard for us to start over. For example, if we look at the turnover rate uh, in Japanese, tenshoku uh, in, if we look at turnover rate, uh, average turnover rate is almost 5%. Uh, per year, okay? Annual turnover rate is 5%. And if we look at the United States, the US turnover rate decline over time. However, still, monthly turnover rate is 2%. That means annual turnover rate is almost 24 to 25%. Okay, so Japan's turnover rate is one fifth of United States. So we can say Japanese labor market is a very, very easy compared to other advanced economy. Okay, so now what we need is flexible labor market. Okay, flexible labor market, liquid labor market. Why? If labor market is flexible, we can easy to get a job, and we can also easy to change our jobs. This is good for workers. Okay, this is good for workers. Why? And not only that, this is also good for firms because if labor market is flexible, we can achieve right person in right place. Uh, in Japanese, tekizai tekisho. If labor market is flexible, right person in the right place can be. Uh, achieved. As a result, we can utilize labor forces. Okay. Not only that, uh, if labor market is flexible, we could adapt change in economic environment. As I mentioned, now the mega trend surrounding Japan change dramatically, and we will face more changes. So, uh, in order to adapt to these changes, okay, our life, our working style our working style should be flexible. To achieve that, we need a flexible labor market, okay? And moreover, if labor market is a lizard, it's 
hinder labor reallocations. As a result, we have lower economic growth. Okay. In the economy, there is always growing industry, growing sector, and a declining industry, declining sector. And what important thing is we have to reallocate money, labor, capital, everything from declining sector to growing sector. If labor market is illicit, we cannot reallocate labor from declining sector to growing sector. Then it's hindered economic growth. Okay. This is what is happening in these countries. And, but if labor market becomes flexible, uh, oh, I'm sorry. So in order to, uh, in order to uh, make labor market flexible, what do we need? Uh, actually, it's a very important topic and uh, I don't have enough time, so I can just give some hint. First, uh, we have to utilize market mechanisms. Okay, market mechanism is important. That means we have to change our system. Okay, and the fair assessment of work contents and the quality is very important. And also we have to change wage systems, wage system. Seniority wage system is not uh, suitable uh, in the flexible labor market. Okay, a wage must be equal to productivities. Uh, as in the as advanced economy. So we have to change our labor market system practice dramatically in order to adapt change in the mega trend. And the workers also need our abilities, okay? So in the 100 years life, we will face many changes. Uh, so we also need to upgrade our skill and knowledge. So skill up is important. Skill up is important. Okay. And in the age of 100 years life, uh, it is always necessary to acquire new expertise. Okay. So reskilling, recurrent education is quite important. Okay. Uh, so that is what we that is what we need uh, in the next uh, few decades. Okay. So do, do you have uh, any questions? It's almost I, I spent almost 15 minutes. So uh, I'm talking about the Japanese economy, especially on the labor market. Do you have any question or comments so far? If not, uh, I have uh, 10 more minutes. So uh, I will speak, I will talk about one more issues. Is that okay? Yes, yes okay. but fine. Yeah, okay, so uh, Okay, then, uh, I will change the topic drama. Uh, I, I will talk about completely different things. Now, uh, let's look at this photo. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to speak in Japanese. Uh, so, あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
で通り挟んで対,あの対面が中央銀行、ラオス中央銀行、日本でいうと日銀ですね、ラオスの中央銀行が存在している、まあ、そういったところのホテルを常夜宿にしてました。で何が言いたいかっていうとですね、今は違うと思いますけど、十数年前にラオスに初めて行ったときに、まあ、ホテルは非常にいいホテルなんで、あの夜になっても明かりや高校と照ってるんですが、あの街に一歩出ますと、まず街灯がない、えー、だから真っ暗なんですね、えー、真っ暗です、あの首都ですよ、えー、中央銀行が目の前にあるような、えー、首都の部分で、街灯がなくて真っ暗なんですね。で朝になりますとねあの、当時は車の通りも少なくて、その目抜き通りを、なんでしょうね、まあ、明治時代っていうのか、江戸時代っていうのか、あの帽子をかぶった現地の方がこうこう、木の棒にですね、前後、かごをぶら下げて、野菜なり魚なり持ってこう、売り歩いてるんですね。だから、日本でいうと、ちょっとその数十年前とか、もっと昔のような状況がそこでこう見られるんですね。夜になると真っ暗、街灯ないから。でまあ、そういった国にあの行ってたんですけども、ある時あの日本留学フェアっていうイベントがありまして、これ何かっていうと、日本の文科省とか、JICA さんとかが主催になってやるんですけども、えー、東南アジアの国に行きましてですね、まあ、東南アジアだけじゃないですけども、いろんな外国に行って、あの日本に留学しませんかと、えー、日本に来て留学をしてくださいね、まあ、そういったキャンペーンをやるんですね。で、まあ、目的は現地の方、日本に来ていただいて、まあ、日本好きになってもらって、もちろんその人たちのこう人材育成をするっていうことも目的なんですが、そういった方がですね、また国に戻っていただいて、重要なポジションに就くとか、えー、日本が好きでビジネスマンになるとかすると、あの日本の外交上、これ非常にあのプラスになるわけですね。ということで、あのそういう人をこう獲得しようっていうんで,ですね、文科省が中心になって宣伝に行くんですね。で、私もそれに参加させていただいたことがあって、あの行ったんですけども。でそうするとですね、あの冒頭の,、まあその会場にやっぱこう日本、日本っていう国を知ってるのか知らないのか知りませんけど、まあ、たくさんの方が集まってくださって、興味深く説明を聞いてくれるんですね。で、まあ、それぞれ大学とか高校とか、いろんなあの教員であったり、教育関係者が行って宣伝するんですけど、えーまあ、一番最初にですね、文部省の方から、あの日本の教育制度についての動画が流れるんですよ。ウェルカムトゥジャパンみたいな感じであ,のあってね、日本に来ませんか日本で教育を受けるといいですよ。日本はこういうあの教育制度です。あの式があって、それで小学校6年。説明なんですね。まあ、内容自体は別に面白くもおかしくもなんともない、まあ、当たり前のことを喋ってるだけなんですけども、その冒頭の動画がですね、東京タワーの夜景で始まるんですね。あのウェルカムトジャパンって動画が流れて、東京タワーがポンと映って夜景でね、それはこうフィードバックしてる、そうするとこういう、まあ、宝石箱を散りばめたようなです、ね、きれいな夜景の動画がトンと映るわけですね。で、先ほども言いましたように、あのラオスの首都、まあ、これ、ビエンチャンと言いますけど、今から10年ぐらい前は夜景すらないぐらい真っ暗なところなんですね。で、そういうところでしばらく1週間とか滞在してて、こういう動画を見るとですね、日本人であってもちょっとドキッとするんですね、おすごいなと。東京の夜景っていうのは。で、それがこう会場中に映し出されると。で、映し出されて、現地の人がそれをこう食い入るように見るわけですけども、どんなふうに見てんだろうなって、僕、ちょっと興味がありましてね、あのたまたま、えー、会場で後ろを振り返ってみたら、まあ、ラオスの若い皆さんぐらいなんでしょうかね、高校生とか大学生ぐらいだと思いますけど、あの女性の参加者の方がいらっしゃってね、数人ね。で、その方たちね、泣いてるんですよ。これ見ながら。で、でなんで泣いてんだろうっていうことなんですけど、か感動してるんですね。で、終わった後にちょっと話す機会があって、通訳を入れて話をしたんですけども、彼らが言ってたのは、あれは何なんだと。あの、さっき映った、あの、光り輝く世界は何なんだと、簡単に言うと。だから、私はこう、あれ東京っていうのがあってね、と人があって、そこに東京タワーっていう、こう、テレビ塔が、あって電波塔があってって説明するわけですけどもそうすると信じらんないっていうんですねでそんな世界があるのかとそりゃそうですよね首都にいたって夜中真っ暗なわけですからちょっと地方に行ったらもっとその状況はあのそれと同じかそれよりも多分貧しいようなところで生活をされてるわけですねその貧しいっていうのは経済的にですよでそういう人たちがやっぱ日本のああいう状況を見るとですね衝撃を受けるんだと思うんですで彼らが真剣に言ってたのはどうすればああいうふうになるんだとその日本に留学をしたらね
、えー、ああいうふうに自分の国って作れるもんなのと、自分たちもああいう生活をしたいと、でそういうことをまあ真剣にあの喋っておられてね。でしばらくお話し付き合わせてもらったんですけど、まあ、非常に熱心に非常にモチベーション高くて皆さんと同じぐらいの方がですね質問をしてきたということなんですね。で、あのー、私の話のポイントは何かっていうとね、あのー、日本っていう国に生まれて普通に暮らしてるとやっぱ世界のことって見えないんですね。で今あのちょっとこれ写真がここに写ってますけど、このパこれ見たことある人いますかね、これ、レセパセって呼ぶんですけどね、国連パスポートっていうので、あの国際機関に勤めると、このレセパセっていう国連パスポートをもらえるんですね。で、まあ、辞めるときに返さなくちゃいけないんで、もう僕持ってないんですけど、あの私も IMF に勤務してるときは、このレセパセってパスポートをもらいました。で、なぜレセパセをもらうのかっていうと、自分の国のパスポートだと、外国に、いけない人ってたくさんいるんです。あのでその国際機関っていうのは世界中からいろんな人が来てますからあの世界中からいろんな人が来てますからねその国によって持ってるパスポートの種類が違うと。で日本のパスポートって世界で本当一番強いっていうぐらいすごいパスポートでこれさえ持っていればですねどこの国でも行けるんです。でも他の国ってそんなことない。どっかの国に行こうと思うと特別なビザを取ったり申請をして非常に大変なんです。ですから、国連の職員に対しては、国連がこの人の身分を保証しますよっていうんで、このレセパセっていうのをく配るんですね。で、まあ、これ持って出張行くんですけども、私はレセパスを使ったことは一度もありません。なぜかっていうと、どの国に行っても、このレセパセっていうのは、レセパセと自国のパスポート両方出すんですよ。でそうするときに、どの国に行っても、ジャパニーズパスポートを取られます。ところが、僕が一緒に出張に行った IMF の同僚は、同じかというと、決してそんなことはない。やっぱり自分の国のパスポートじゃなくて、そのレセパセっていうのをよこせって言われて、そこに反抗してしまう。つまり、そのぐらい、どこの国のパスポートを持ってるかで、あの国際移動のしやすさとか違うんですね。で、それって、ひとえにその国の国力なんですよ。やっぱり日本っていう国が、今は国力が低下してますが、まあ、かつてのね、えー、繁栄がありますので、えー、世界の中でそれなりの立場を示していると。で、だから日本のパスポートも強い。いうことなんですねだから日本に生まれただけでこれ実は非常に幸運なことなんですね。で今世界っていうのはもう国際化が進展していますあのメガトレンドの変化でも出てきましたけども国際化って普通でもう世界が舞台なんですよマーケットが日本なんて発想は全くなくて世界が舞台なんですね。ですから例えば野球とかサッカーとかプロスポーツを考えていても分かると思いますけども優秀な人材はみんなメジャーリーガーになったり海外に行って活躍しますよね。同じなんですどんなビジネス、どんな社会で生きようとしても、あのグローバル化っていうのはもう避けられないんです。好きだとか嫌いとか言ってる場合じゃない。避けられない。で、グローバル化の本質って何っていうと、これ競争なんですよ。だからよく最近、脱競争とか脱成長とか変なこと言うやついますけど、そんなことは全くその何ですかね、グローバルなあの流れを理解してない。グローバル化の本質化は本当に競争です。で、競争するときっていうのは、初期条件が同じじゃないんですよ。生まれた国によって全然初期条件違う。で、日本人っていうのは生まれただけでもラッキーなぐらい、あの、世界の中でトップティアにもともといるんです。で、さっきのラオスの話じゃないですけども、僕はよく自分の学生に言うのは、朝、ま、朝起きたらね、世界中がその自分のことを注目してると思って生きてるのかということを、まあ、自分のゼミの学生なんかに言うんですけど、それどういうことかっていうと、その皆さん個人個人の名前とか顔とかはもちろん世界の人は知りませんけども、日本人っていうことを知ってる人は、あいつらはいい暮らししてんだってことを知ってるんですよ。ってことは、やっぱり戦争の眼差しであったりね、羨ましいなとかね、妬みとか人間ありますからね、いろんな思いを持って日本人を見てる。でも日本人っていうのはその世界のトップティアに生まれながらいるわけですよ。ってなったら、やっぱり世界のために貢献をすると。まあそういうふうになるってことは非常に重要なわけですね。そのためには、このグローバルな視野っていうのをどうしても持たなくちゃいけない。そのぐらい、今世界っていうのは大きく変わっているということですね。ですから、あの、やはりこう世界にインパクトを与えるということが非常に重要なんじゃないのかなというふうに思いますね。だから、まあ、さっきの話じゃないですけど、やっぱり朝起きたらですね、世界中が自分を思っているんだと思って、まあ、生きるということは非常に重要なのかなと。それからあの皆さん、こう、高知工科大学っていうね、極めて優れた大学にいらっしゃって、まして小谷先生みたいな、あの、非常にこう
グローバルな視野をお持ちの先生のもとで授業を受けていますからあの非常に大きな可能性を持っているとそうすると、まあ、日本はもあの,のみならず世界にも十分にインパクトを与えることができるわけですねで、まあ、世界って広いですからそういった世界のことを知るってことは実は非常に楽しいんですねで知るだけでも楽しいんだったらそこで活躍するのは実はもっと楽しいと。でまあ、ぜひそういうふうなものを目指してですね今後勉強をしていただければと思います。あの今日はあのちょっと駆け足で2つのことをしゃべらなくちゃいけなかったんであの前半と、ね、後半の話はちょっとこう中途半端で終わってるかもしれませんけれども次回もう1回来週ですかねもう,一度もう一度1時間時間をもらうので来週はちょっと財政の話をしようと思ってます。これは全面英語でやりますけどあの日本の借金ですね。これ、非常に厳しい状況になっていますあの。日本では借金してても大丈夫だみたいなことを言う人いますけど、国際社会はそんなこと思ってません。あのこれ、特に若い皆さんの生活にかかってくる話です。その辺を、えー、次回は一緒に考えていきたいというふうに思っております。えー、っと、ちょっとまあ、ちょうど1時間ぴったりなりましたので、ここで、えー、ストップをさせていただきたいと思います。えー、今日はありがとうございました。宮本さん、どうもありがとうございました。フロア戻します、答え先生に、はい。ありがとうございます、宮本さん。はいはいはい。聞こえます、聞こえます。OK。じゃあ、皆さんあの、宮本先生、非常にあのあの国際経験豊かで、あの研究者としても、えー、思想家としても、まあ、一応私の、えー、知る限り、友人の中でも超一流の方に今日やってもらいました。で、今日の話題っていうのは、まあ、あれですねどちらかというと日本が、まあ、昔の栄光から少しずつシステムを変えていかないと、えー、どんどん良くならないんじゃないかなみたいなことをあの経済的な面からいろいろやってくださったと思います。で、まあ、皆さんこれ一応ですね、えー、動画で撮っているのであと、えー、でこの撮った動画をですねムードル上にアップロードしておきますので、えー、もしえー、英語でですね部分的にこう理解できないところとかあったら何回か聞き直して、えーまああのー、考えてみてください。で今日宮本先生があ話してくれた前半の部分これは日本が国際的な社会の変革の中でどういう立ち位置にいたのか非常に明確に言ってくれたと思います。であと後半部分ですねぜひあの宮本さんからのこのメッセージを受け取っていろいろ考えてみてください。はい、宮本さん、なんかあの残り30分の課題として、これは学生にこう英語で書いてもらいたいとか、こういうことをちょっと聞いてみたいっていうのがあれば、言ってくだされば、あの学生に、まあ、課題としてそのまま与えますけれども、<笑>何かありますかそうですね、その課題というか、まあまあ、英語で書くとちょっと難しいと思いますけど、えー、話のポイントからすると、まあ、皆さん、これから大学卒業されて多くの方が就職されたりとかね、えー、すると思うんです。社会に出られると思うんですけど、その年人生100年時代になると、今までとは違ったこうライフコースになりますよって話だと思うんです。でこれって決してその老人とかね、年配の人だけの話じゃなくて、皆さんに直結する話なんですよね。で、そういったあの世の中がこう変わっていくっていうときに、じゃあ、その変わっていくって状況をもちろん皆さん自身が、こう認識をしてくださって勉強してくださることが重要なんですがその中でじゃあ個人として皆さんは何が必要なんだのかとどういうことがそのこれから10年20年30年間の,その激動の時代に求められるのか自分だったらこんなことをやるべきなんじゃないのかっていうようなことをまあ少し考えていただくとあのご自身の将来の役にも立つのかなとそんなふうに思いますね。はい、ありがとうございます。じゃあ、皆さん、今、宮本さんの聞かれたことを英語で書く。それと同時に、今日宮本さんの、えー、行ってくださった、えー、講義の内容、どのように理解したのか、まとめて、えー、提出してください。英語で書いて、まとめて、Gmail の、えー、提出先、課題提出先に、まあ、1週間後、次の授業までに。出してくださいそれを今日の課題としたいと思います。で、また1週間後、えー、宮本先生には、えー、また、えー、今度は日本の財政問題、まあ、国際的な視点でまたあお話ししてくれると思います。えー、ラジャー。
Hello. Yes, yes, Mr. Anything you may want to say to Professor Miyamoto? Uh, no, I, I formally enjoyed the Professor Miyamoto's talk after a very long time. So it reminded me of IUJ lecture. <laughs> one second. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you yes, very one much. One second, yeah. So 10 years already passed. <laughs> it was Hello. quite inter yeah, mm. interesting. Oh. 今、高知工科大学の,あのポタニック研究室にいるポスドック研究員や大学院生たちは宮本先生に英語で講義を受けた、まあ、教え子でもあり、それで今僕のもとでまだ研究している学生もい,れいてくれます。で、皆さんはですねあの、私も宮本さんも10年前同じ職場でずっと働いてて、今日宮本さんが言ってくれたことっていうのは、あの僕も身につまされる思いでこう感じてたことで、あの当時のことを非常に思い出しました。あの皆さんがあの恵まれている環境にいるっていうことをなかなか実感しづらいですよね、日本にいると。で、私が思ったのはあの、いろんな国、発展途上国行って感じたことっていうのは、やっぱりあの今日宮本さんが言ったようなことを非常に感じたので、皆さんもぜひ機会があれば、まあ、今、コロナで難しいですけれども、まあ、世界で活躍する。で、まあ、グローバル化の本質は競争って宮本さんが言ってくれましたけれども、あの私もそういうふうに思いますしあの自分の娘や息子にはあの競争社会のいいところと恐ろしいところを伝えていっています。で皆さんにも、まあ、それぞれ世の中に対する解釈は自由ですが、まあ、グローバル化の本質宮本さんが今日言ってくれたことをぜひ胸に受け止めてですね、えー、残りの大学生活送ってくれれば私としては嬉しいと思います。じゃあ今日はあの宮本先生どうもありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。じゃあ、皆さんまた1週間後、えー、引き続き宮本先生に講義を行ってもらいます。えー、また次楽しみにしててください。えー、皆さん質問ある方何かあれば最後聞きますが、ありますかはい、ありませんか。えっ、ー、と、宮本さんの示したあの国連職員がモデルパスポートをちょっと1回ぐらい手にしてみたいなってちょっと思いましたけど、まあ、それは別の話で。はいうんえーじゃあ今日は本当ありがとうございました宮本先生はいありがとうございましたはいありがとうございましたじゃあ今日の授業はこれで一旦終わりにします皆さん課題提出1週間後までによろしくお願いしますありがとうございましたはい失礼します